Good morning, boys and girls, moms and dads, maybe grandmas or grandpas. Um, I was going to read you a story today that is a really cute story that um, Xander's teacher had them listen to on a YouTube um, video this past week. And you might be wondering why I would be choosing a story off of like the school page like that. But um, it has a really, really good message. It's like a parable, like the books that I've been reading to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through um, kind of explaining a little bit about it and what I want you to look for when you listen to it and watch it because Landon is going to include the link for the story and it's not very long at all but it's a very cute story. It's called Memoirs of a Hamster. Um, if you happen to have the book you can go back and look at it and discuss why this applies with um, scripture. Okay. This book is uh, talking about a little hamster and he thinks that his life is just fantastic. He's got his cage, he's got his wheel, he's got his water bottle, he gets his treats and then a cat comes up and starts talking to him and says, well, there's this whole big wide world out there that you don't know anything about. So, um, the hamster starts to feel, hmm, maybe I need to investigate this big world. And I'm not going to give away what happens because I don't want to do that so that you'll enjoy the, the book. But I want you to compare it in your minds and talk about this with your parents or your grandparents about how this is very parallel to what Satan did with Eve in the Garden of Eden. Okay? In scripture, it says that Satan said to Eve, Did God really say that you couldn't eat of this tree? Did God really say that? He's asking her a question, and he puts a doubt in her mind. Here she's in this perfect environment, like our little hamster friend, and everything's great and good, and she's got everything that she needs, she and Adam. But this serpent comes along, and Satan puts this doubt in her mind about, is God keeping something from her? Um... Is there something that God has not told them? Is there something God knows that they should know? And that causes um, questioning in her mind and temptation for her. And, um, and we know the result, right? We live in a world of sin. We live in a broken world where there's COVID-19 and there's... Um, children that are starving and there are crimes and there are diseases and and um, just so many things there there are tears and there's pain and there's um, all these things as a result of her questioning God I want you to think about that when you listen to this story uh, on the YouTube link that Landon will put in with this video. And then I also want you to think about it in relation to your parents and what they tell you and whether you question and ask why, 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 why can't I do this? Why are you saying this? Why, why? Um, and think that your parents are trying to keep you from something fun or great. 
and think about, do you really think that's true? Do you really think your parents would do that? Okay, so I hope you enjoy that video. But since I don't have that to show you, um, what we're going to do today is we are going to go through the books of the Old Testament. Now, the uh, third graders learned these back, I'm, I can't remember if it was kindergarten or first grade. One of you could tell me that. But I um, made up some motions to help learn and remember the books of the Bible. So we're going to go through the Old Testament books, and I'm going to show you those motions. And as I go through, I'll explain if there's one that I think you might not understand why I'm doing it um, this way. Okay? Um, I know there's a song, but it's very, the melody is really, really repetitious, and I think that um, it's good for you to have more than one way to learn. Um, some people learn best by hearing, some people learn best by seeing, some people learn best by doing, and so this way you can see, do, and hear, um, all three, okay? So we'll start with Genesis. Okay, now, Genesis is the beginning of everything, and that's why we did this for Genesis. Genesis, Exodus. What is Exodus? Pharaoh says, Go, Moses, get out, go. So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Leviticus is a lot of rules. And so we're going like this. Don't do this and don't do this and don't do this. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay, the reason I did that is because it's so long and I couldn't think of anything to go with Deuteronomy. Okay, so let's do the first five together. Ready? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Joshua, he was a general, right, for um, the army of God. Joshua. Judges, you're hitting your gavel on the uh, podium like a judge, okay, in a courtroom. So Joshua, judges, now this one, bend over and pick up. Ruth, she picked up the grain that was left in the field, remember, that the workers would drop. So we have Ruth. First and second, Samuel. We're putting on our coat that Hannah brought to him every year in the temple. First and second, Samuel. First and second, Kings. We got a crown on, right? Kings. First and second, Chronicles. Chronicles is writing down the history, okay? So we're writing, okay? Or you could do it like this, I guess, if you wanted to. Okay, let's start from the beginning and try all those again. Okay, ready? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Now we have a queen. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I goofed. First and second Chronicles. Ezra. Ezra was very faithful in praying to God and asking God for help. So Ezra. Nehemiah. Nehemiah built, rebuilt the wall around the city of Jerusalem. So we have Ezra. Nehemiah. Esther. Okay, we have a queen's crown and then she's a woman so esther for her hair okay okay let's start with joshua and go through those ready joshua judges ruth first and second samuel first and second kings first and second chronicles ezra nehemiah 
Esther. Job. Job had bad sores all over him. And he lost all his family except for his wife. And he lost all his um, animals, his livestock, and his house. And he got very sick. And God allowed this to happen. So we point to the sores on his skin and we look sad. So Job. Psalms. Psalms are songs. Okay, the songs of David. So Job. Psalms. Proverbs. Proverbs was written by Solomon, the wisest man on the earth. Um, that was all human, not um, part God. Obviously, Jesus was the smartest man that ever lived on the earth. But Solomon, remember, asked for wisdom. So we're pointing to our, our mind, our brains, for wisdom, for Proverbs. Okay, so we have Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Ecclesiastes, we're pointing to our watch. Why are we doing that? Because in Ecclesiastes, there's the very famous passage that's well known that says, there's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to laugh and a time to cry, a time to build up and a time to tear down. And it, it goes on and on. You can read that together with your family if you want to. Um, so we point to our watch for time to remember that one. Okay, let's start at the beginning um, and let's go through, oh, let me do the next one. The next one is Songs of Solomon and we love because it's a love story. So Songs of Solomon, okay? All right, here we go. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon. Okay, now we have the prophets. This this um, designation or division in the Bible is called the prophets. So we have Isaiah, and we're cradling a baby. And the reason we're doing this is because Isaiah foretells the coming of Jesus. And he talks about Jesus. He's called the Messianic prophet, for he foretells the Messiah. So Isaiah, Jeremiah, his nickname is the Weeping Prophet. So we have a sad face and we act like we're crying. Isaiah, Jeremiah, then we're really going to cry because the next book is also written by Jeremiah and it's Lamentations. So Lamentations, to lament means to cry and weep. All right, so we have Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Now this one, you're going to act like you're dead, okay? And then you're going to put your arms up. So be it like a dead skeleton and put your arms up because Ezekiel is the book that talks about the Valley of Dry Bones. And God tells Ezekiel, can these bones live? And then God makes them live. He puts them together and they become alive. All right? So we have Ezekiel, Daniel. That one I don't have to explain, I don't think. Rawr, Daniel. Hosea, we're spraying with a hose. Hosea, okay? Let's do the the prophets so far. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, 
Now we have three that we're using sign language for. Joel, Amos, and then Obadiah, an O. Okay, so Joel, Amos, Obadiah. Then we have swimming. Swimmy, swimmy, swimmy for Jonah, who got swallowed by the great fish. Okay, then we have Micah. We're singing into a mic. Jonah, Micah. And then we're going to neigh like a horse for Nahum. Okay, Nahum. Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. The last five, couldn't really think of anything for those five. So those fives, you're just going to have to memorize the names, okay, of those books. And those are minor prophets. Haggai, I'm sorry, um, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, okay? All right, let's see if we can go through the whole Old Testament, which, by the way, has how many books? How many books? Do you remember? 39. 39 books in the Old Testament. Okay, ready? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. And there you have your books of the Old Testament. Hope that helps you. I hope you can um, learn those and get them into your mind. Now, I'm not telling you to learn these just to learn them to, so you can spout them off like that like say them back. Um, the reason that it's important for you to learn the books of the Bible is so you can find scripture, find verses in the Bible. Um, yes, I know we have Bible apps on our phones now and we don't really have to know where the books are, but I still think it's really good for you to be able to take a hard copy Bible, a book, and be able to find um, scriptures because if you don't know where it is then how are you going to share it right okay um, I hope you enjoyed that um, I'm sorry it didn't go exactly as I thought because um, with copyright and stuff I didn't realize how I could not play the uh, recording for you of the the book memoirs of a hamster but um, I'm sharing the link with you and you can go on and listen to that and see the cute pictures, cute, cute pictures and illustrations and then um, discuss the, the story with your family and how it's really a modern kind of parable too because it very much parallels um, Eve and the garden. Okay? All right, I hope you have a great day tomorrow. I know it's supposed to rain, rain. I miss seeing you all. Um, I know it's hard not being able to be with your friends. And um, just hang in there. Um, there's FaceTime and phones you can call and talk to each other. Okay, love you all. Bye.